human. Lungs. When you breathe in, your ribs move out and upwards. Now, all of us have rib cage, ribs, okay? Our ribs move out and upwards. So you try to take a deep breath. When you take a deep breath, your ribs did move out and they did move up. Try breathing in, okay? Try it, okay? Your diaphragm, now this diaphragm is something that you can't see. It's inside our body. Now, this diaphragm is like a rubber sheet. Now, during the exam paper, you always see, they will say the rubber sheet of, you know, the diaphragm move downwards. So, your diaphragm, a thin sheet of muscle move downwards. Okay, so they will move downwards when you breathe in. So the diaphragm move downwards when I'm breathing. Okay, so you saw this. They actually represented the diaphragm with a red piece of muscle here moving downwards. This caused the chest to become bigger. You could tell, right? When I'm breathing, the chest actually gets a little bigger. Okay, that's why it becomes bigger, right? As a result, air rushes into your body through your nose or your mouth. Now, you could either breathe through your nose or breathe through your mouth. So, no matter how you do it, definitely, you will cause your ribs to move out and upwards and the diaphragm move downwards. And then, of course, the chest becomes a little bigger. Air that enters the respiratory system is clean, warm and moisture. Now, what does it mean? When it enters through your nostril, now you have nose hair right now. The nose hair actually helps to trap the dust. Now, and of course, they also trap some bacteria. Now, when they trap the dust and bacteria, the rest of the cool air starts to rush in through your nostril. Now, they will be cleaned up, means the nose hair help you to trap it, trap any dust, so they clean up for you. When it goes through your nostril, you feel that there is a cold gas of air going in but then it will be warmed up and then it become moist so your air become a little moist so that when it goes into your lungs you can use those oxygen for your blood okay your blood will be able to carry oxygen rich blood to all parts of your body when you breathe out now let's talk about breathing out just now we talk about breathing in Rib cage move out and upwards and diaphragm move downwards. Now, breathing out is the exact opposite. So please don't go and memorize by heart for both sides, breathing in and breathing out. Just remember breathing in, you'll know breathing out. Let me run through. When you breathe out, your ribs move in and downwards. So you see, it's the opposite of move out and upwards. So you see, move in and downwards. And then what is the opposite? The diaphragm move upwards, okay? This causes the chest to become smaller and the air that has carbon dioxide in it is forced out of your lungs. You see, breathing in, breathing out. This causes the chest to become smaller because once you breathe out, you force out the carbon dioxide out from your lungs. That's why your chest becomes smaller. Now, once we know about humans, of course, let's move on to talk about fish, in particular fish, okay? Sometimes they love to have questions about fishes. Fish breathe with their gills. Gills are feather-like structure with a rich supply of blood vessel. They are found under the gill covers of fish. A fish makes use of the oxygen that is dissolved in water around it. So remember, gills trap dissolved oxygen in water. They can't stay on land because they can't take in oxygen from the air, but they can take in oxygen from dissolved, I mean, dissolved in water. When water enters the mouth of the fish and flows over its gills, oxygen passes through the walls of the blood vessels and into the blood. Remember, when they take in water continually they are opening up their mouth open close open close they are actually taking in water together with the dissolved oxygen into their mouth so this will pass through their gills and the gills will trap the dissolved oxygen which will be taken in through the walls of the blood vessel and into the blood and then is carried to all parts of the body 
fish is then carried, oh sorry, oxygen is then carried by the blood to different parts of the fish. Carbon dioxide passes through the walls of the blood vessels, dissolves in the water and is carried away as the water flows out from under the gills cover. Now what does it mean? The moment they use up oxygen, of course they will produce carbon dioxide like us, respiration remember? So take in oxygen, give out carbon dioxide, so then they will be passed out through the gills when they breathe it out, okay? That's what they mean. Now let's talk about some mammals that live in water, just like us, they have lungs. Take note, our dolphin, our whales, they have lungs, but they have something called blowhole, okay? The whale and dolphins are mammals that live in water, just like fish, they stay in water all the time. Like all mammals, the whale and dolphins breathe through lungs. They need to come up to the water surface to take in air, otherwise they will drown. So remember, they do not have gills. Since they have no gills, they cannot take in air or oxygen from water. They must come up to the surface to take in the oxygen from the surrounding. The whale and dolphin has special nostril called blow holes on top of their heads. There you go, blow holes, okay? During breathing, the whale and dolphin only need to stick part of their head out of the water to expose their blow holes to the air. Meaning, they'll come up to the surface, they'll force out, force out whatever water that goes through the blow hole. When they force it out, they are also forcing out the carbon dioxide so that they can take in oxygen from the surrounding. A whale often blows through the blowhole to get rid of the water that has entered it. 